Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to start stripping out the old front suspension and steering parts and replace it with all the parts that we've covered in some of the first videos where we uh, refurbished the control arms, spindles, and brakes. Let's get the old stuff out so we can get the new stuff in. Okay, we got the tie right in off. Now we can get to the nuts that hold the spindle to the upper and lower control arms. We'll loosen them just a bit. I'll put the jack under the lower control arm and jack it up just a hair to take some of the compression off that spring. And we'll take the nuts off. And in the meantime, I'm gonna run a chain through that spring to that lower control arm just to make sure it doesn't get crazy. Okay, at this point, I've gotten everything loosened up. I just need to remove the spindle from the upper and lower control arm. But I wanted to show you something important. These springs are under a lot of tension and you don't want it to get loose from you. So as a little added measure of safety, I run a length of chain and I attach it around the control arm. So just in case something should slip, that spring won't come flying out of there and uh, create a very bad day. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the nuts uh, upper and lower. So I can separate the upper and we'll just lower the lower control arm because it appears this lower stud's pretty stubborn and I've been banging on it with a pickle fork and so far it hasn't wanted to let go. And that's okay, I got the top loose. I can drop the whole assembly down and get the spring out that way. I did manage to get the spindle completely out. So now it's a matter of lowering that control arm, getting the spring out and uh, the hardest part should be done. Now it's free. And it springs out. With everything off now, I'll repeat for the other side and then we'll uh, remove the control arms, steering linkage, and sway bar. Okay, at this point we've gotten the front end pretty much taken apart. Still have the upper and lower control arms to remove and the dust shields. The uh, sway bar and the steering linkage has all been dropped. And uh, it's the same on the other side. Over here, the uh, just the control arms and the brake line remain. Uh, next we'll take out the brake lines, take out the control arms, couple of tips on uh, removing the steering linkage. When it comes to the idler arm, uh, it's 18 millimeter bolts. There's two of them from the inside and you have to access them from the inside. So you may have to bend your fender shield a little bit in order to uh, get a socket in there uh, to hold that bolt so that you can break it loose and get it out. And uh, getting it back uh, is going to be careful too. On the driver's side, the pitman arm, uh, you need a Pittman puller to get that off. I used a large crescent wrench to remove the nut and then the Pittman puller I used is uh, this Performance Tool W142. That fits perfectly and uh, works really good. Okay, we're removing the upper control arms and I want you to notice something. This is something most uh, videos don't bring up but it's very important because when you're lowering the front suspension you need to be able to adjust the suspension to compensate uh, for the lowering to align the front end. And the upper control arms can be modified so that they can be adjustable, or at least give you more adjustability than the stock location. What I'm showing you is the, this is the passenger side upper control arm, and you'll notice the front hole has a single hole, and the back hole is a slot. 
presently at a stock height, tires and wheels and that sort of thing for alignment. This is what the eccentric looks like that goes in it. It's a, a bolt that has a flat edge to it on the top here and it goes through the washer and it locks it into a specific position for the alignment. When you lower it, you need to have adjustability. So as you can see, there's an indentation here where it's kind of oval, just like the back one. We're gonna punch that out. And the reason being, when this bolt is in that hole, presently, because of the single hole, it is not adjustable. It has very little movement to it whatsoever. But once this is knocked out, that allows this bolt to turn and when this uh, thick washer is between these two uh, little walls, so to speak, right here, it either goes up or down, and that moves your upper control arm in or out. So I'm gonna knock out that piece of metal, and I'm just using a hammer and a punch. All the plugs have been removed. On the passenger side, that first one came out easy. The second one, not so much. I really had to work on that to open it up and make it so it work. When I got to the driver's side, they were already removed. And we've also cleaned out all the suspension now, so there's nothing left under here. Even the brake lines are gone. Now is a great time to change your motor mounts, and here's why. When you go up under here, this is where the lower control arm mounts, the front portion of the A arm. And you can see there are the bolts inside there to access it. If you don't remove your control arm, you can still do this, but it's not easy. It's going to take you a lot longer, and you're going to use a lot of colorful language. So while I'm under here, we're going to go ahead and take these mounts out. Okay, I'm showing you on the passenger side where the lower control arm is, and you can hardly even see the bolts. You can see that the area to access them is even smaller than on the driver's side. So again, just drop the lower control arms makes life a lot easier. So if this is what your mounts currently look like, that's your V6 mount. If it was a V8, the mount would be right here. And that would be a little bit more convenient, but if it needs to be replaced, well, you still need to have access to it. So let's see if I get these taken out and put in the new motor mounts. The new motor mounts installed. I just used three bolts rather than the four or five or four and six that the stock mounts did. Uh, these are going to mount a lot better. They have less cushion. They do have a rubber bushing in there, but they're a lot tighter than the clamshells. So these would be great mounts to use if you're using headers or something where uh, an exhaust system where you have really tight clearances and you don't want the engine moving around. Uh, that's why on the uh, 95 Chevy, I did not use these and I was going to use headers and I did not because the clearances were so tight with the stock clamshell motor mounts that uh, the engine moved around a little too much and created some problem. So here are the new motor mounts installed. Hope those were some good tips for today. Um, calling it quits for the day. Going to pick it up again tomorrow. I didn't want to make a video that was going to be too long. It'll be a bit boring. So this will be part one, the disassembly and the installation of the motor mounts. Tomorrow, or well, soon, part two, and that'll be the installation of the control arms and the brakes and getting that, uh, getting this front end back together. Thanks for watching and good luck on your project.